In this video, we're going to go through the main steps to install the automatic road barrier guard GT4 from Kame. First, remove the top cover and the hatch to get access to the inside of the barrier. You'll see that in the bottom we have a balancing spring and a box with some parts. Take them out so we can anchor the barrier. It's very important that the surface is flat and level to prevent the cabinet from flexing too much. Use the included key to release the main shaft from the gear motor and that way we are going to be able to move it manually. Put it in the closed position depending on the side where the boom is going to be installed. You'll see that inside the boom there's a support that should be in the side where it's going to be attached to the barrier. Then use the four short screws to fix the flange and intermediate plate. After that use the four long screws to attach the boom to the barrier. Slide the rubber profile on the bottom of the boom. Also install the side covers on each side of the boom, sliding first one edge of the entire cover and then the other edge. In case you're going to install the LED strip accessory, make sure to put this strip first into the cover before putting it in the boom. And obviously you will have to run the cable through the center of the main shaft. To install the balancing spring, put the boom in the vertical position and lock it to prevent it from falling. Prepare the spring by adding the bottom bolt that is screw turning it counterclockwise, which is the opposite direction as we used to since we are going to use it to adjust the tension later and this part is going to be upside down. Depending on the length of the boom and accessories installed on it, you can install the spring on either of the three holes. The closer to the center, the less force the spring is going to apply to the main shaft. There's a hook on the bottom to place that side of the spring and then bring some tension by turning the entire spring. The idea is that the weight of the boom rests in the spring, so release the boom and put it at 45 degrees. If it drops, you need to increase the tension of the spring. If it goes upward, it means there's too much tension, so turn the spring in the other direction. When the boom stays at 45 degrees by itself, it means the boom is properly balanced. Tighten the nut to prevent it from moving by itself because of the vibrations. Now we're ready to adjust the physical limits for closing position. and for opening position. Once all this is done, we are ready to power the barrier connecting the mains as shown here. The control board is on the top where you can change the settings with a menu system that we can access by pressing the enter button. And use the arrow buttons to navigate and change values. The first basic step in the configuration process is to set the opening direction. So go to F54 and select the corresponding value. If the barrier opens to the left, the value must be zero. If it opens to the right, you need to set it to one. In my case, it opens to the left, so I put it in zero. Remember to press enter to confirm the selection. 
The next step is to go to A1 and set the length of the boom. So measure the arm and set it to that number of meters. Now we're ready to do a travel calibration, so go to A3 and press enter. Then use the arrows until it says on and press enter. It will start the calibration procedure by closing and then opening by itself. After the calibration is over, you can test everything by pressing the left and right arrows. Keep in mind that you can only do this while the board is not in the menu system. If you're going to program a remote control, make sure to install the AF card in the control board. Just remember to remove the power before installing the AF card. To program a remote control, go to U1. Press enter and it will show the number 1 indicating the command you want to assign to the button of the remote control. Select which type of command you want and press enter. Then a number is going to blink, indicating that it's ready to receive the signal from the remote control. So press the button you wish to program. That signal is going to be stored in the user number that was blinking before. Now it's blinking the number two because it's ready to receive another signal and it's going to be stored in the user number two. On this board, we can store up to 250 users. If you connect a safety device like a photocell, the normally closed contact should be connected between 2 and CX. To enable it, go to F2 and select the corresponding behavior you want to execute when the photocell detects an obstruction. For example, this photocell is in the path of the driveway, so I'm going to select C1, that it will reopen while it's closing. You can connect another safety device in pin CY and CZ, and assign the function in F3 and F4, respectively. If you want to enable auto-closing, you can do that in F19, choosing the number of seconds you want the barrier to stay open, before closing automatically. To send a command using an external device, like a push button, you can use pins 2 and 7 as a normally open contact. Also, the pins 2 and 3 can be used to send an open command. And pin 4 is for a closing command. One function you might want to change is the speed of movement that you can edit in F28 for opening and F29 for closing speed. There are so many other options and features that you can explore in the manual, so I invite you to check it out. Link in the description. I hope it was helpful and thank you for choosing Kame for your automation solution.